I've got some breaking news out of Ford today about its NAX to CCS1 adapter program. And believe it or not, this is going to be good news for Ford customers. After a string of announcements that were less than positive, including multiple delays and even a recall that wasn't a recall, we finally have some good news and perhaps the light at the end of the tunnel for Ford customers waiting to get their NAX to CCS1 adapter. With that said, let's get into it. All right, so first, let me rewind a little bit to talk about how we got to where we are today. Ford was the first OEM to announce that it was going to transition its electric vehicles from the existing North American standards of J1772 for AC charging and CCS1 for DC fast charging to the Tesla plug, or at the time they called it the North American Charging Standard, or NACS for short. The technical term for it now is the J3400 plugs, but we still call it NAX because that's what most people are familiar with. And uh, they said that they would begin installing native NAX inlets in their vehicles sometime in 2025. But in the interim, they wanted their customers to have access to the Tesla supercharger network because in addition to transitioning to that connector, they made a deal with Tesla to allow Ford's vehicles to have access to Tesla superchargers. And in order to do so, it would require an adapter because the superchargers have the NAX connector on them. So Tesla announced that they were going to make an adapter uh, to allow the CCS1 vehicles to charge on their supercharger network. That's the adapter here that's made by Tesla. And when Ford announced that they were going to be providing an adapter, it was going to be the Tesla made adapter. And at the time, Ford and Tesla both said they only want their customers to use this adapter because it's the only one that Tesla felt comfortable with because they designed it. They knew a lot of other adapters were going to hit the market, uh, you know, and some of them were going to be inferior products. And just to err on the side of caution, Ford and Tesla said, you know what? You can only use this one here because we, we don't want any problems. Now, the problem with that was these adapters are passive. So neither the charging station nor the vehicle know there's an adapter in the middle of the two. So there really was no way of Ford or Tesla stopping people from using an unauthorized adapter. I knew this and I knew people were going to want to go out on the market and buy third-party adapter. So I decided to uh, do comprehensive reviews of the uh, Electron Vortex adapter and the A to Z Typhoon adapter, both of which uh, come from companies that are reputable and I know they wouldn't put out products that weren't safe. There's can't be said about some of the uh, other brands, particularly a lot of these companies come from Asia that we've never heard of, uh, that put out really cheap stuff. So I can understand why Tesla and Ford said only use the Ford adapter. Don't worry, I'm getting somewhere with this story. So Ford started shipping out the adapters to customers that asked for one. Ford put out this offer that if you applied for a free adapter, if you own a Ford electric vehicle and apply for this adapter, we'll send it to you for free, which was a fantastic thing for Ford to do to say, look, you don't have to pay for shipping. We'll give you the adapter for free. Go to our website and apply for it. So a ton of people went, filled out the forms. And this was back in April, I think, of 2024. We're now in tomorrow's November of 2024. Plenty of Ford customers still don't have their adapters. So what Ford realized early on was that Tesla wasn't going to be able to supply these adapters fast enough. So they extended the deadline for people to apply for the adapter, uh, for their free adapter, a couple of times. Uh, that's over now. So now if you want to get it from Ford, if you haven't already applied for your free adapter, you do have to pay for it. And then to make matters worse, uh, a week or two ago, Ford announced that they had problems with a certain batch of the Tesla adapters and they weren't recalling them. Well, they were recalling them, but they weren't recalling them. They said, this is not a recall. It's a customer satisfaction program, I think, something like that. Um, but don't use the adapter we sent you because we found that it's faulty. Uh, we're going to send you a new one. And Ford identified the bad batch of Tesla adapters, and they sent emails to customers that had those adapters. The, I got this adapter from Ford here. I didn't get the email because I wasn't in the batch of bad adapters. It wasn't like all of them were bad. There was a specific batch, 
and Ford and Tesla knew which ones were bad. So if you didn't get that email, don't worry, you're in the clear. If you did get the email, don't use that adapter. Please wait until Ford sends you a new one. With that announcement, they said that they would begin shipping these new adapters the week of October 28th, which was two, three days ago. So they should have begun shipping them already. And I announced this um, uh, not recall here on State of Charge. I got a ton of customers that responded saying, look, Tom, I still haven't got my initial adapter. I applied for this thing in May, and now Ford's going to send a second adapter to some of their customers, ones that were lucky enough to get this adapter early on. That's not fair. I mean, I got a lot of comments. You could go back to that video. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video, and you'll see a lot of people were not happy that some customers were getting their second adapter while they still haven't gotten their first one. Okay, so fast forward to now. Ford is announcing today that uh, in order to ease the um, shortage of adapters, Tesla simply can't make these things fast enough because now they're supplying them to multiple automakers, to Rivian, to General Motors, to Polestar and Volvo. Uh, Ford sees that this isn't going to get any better and their customers are going to continue to wait. So what they're announcing here today is State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I help you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, Follow the link in the description of my videos and have the installation professionals at Qmerit install it. And by following the link, Qmerit will waive the $200 on-site inspection fee. But in order to have that fee waived, you have to follow the link in the description of my videos. They have officially endorsed the Lectron Vortex adapter. They're actually going to be selling it and branding it Ford. But it is this same adapter that I've been talking about for the last eight months that I've said, look, this thing is safe. I think once car companies get to really take a close look at it and tear it down and do their own testing, they're going to say, yeah, this one's good too. I think you could use that. I still think they're going to say that about the A to Z Typhoon Pro adapter, but that hasn't happened yet. So as of today, Ford is going to start shipping <clears throat> the Electron adapter also. Um, uh, hopefully they've secured a huge purchase order from Lectron and all of the customers that have been waiting for so long are finally going to get them because it just wasn't going to happen with this adapter here. I told my followers back in, I think, March that I don't think everybody that applies for these are going to get them th this year. And I know a lot of people said, Tom, it, it, that's nine months from now. They're not going to get them. And I said, yeah, I think there's going to be such a shortage that some people are going to be waiting seven, eight, nine, ten months. And that's why I told people these two adapters here might be good alternatives. Turns out I wasn't wrong. There's a lot of Ford customers that haven't gotten their adapter yet. So now Ford has announced they're going to be shipping these also. By the way, GM is also shipping this, uh, the Electron Vortex adapter to customers that order the adapter. They don't, you can't select which one. I want the Tesla one. I want the, the Ford branded uh, Electron adapter. If you order the adapter or if you're waiting for an adapter, you'll get one of these two. It's not up to you to decide which one that you want because honestly, they both perform the same. They're both 1000 volt, 500 amp. I've used them both extensively as long with the uh, A to Z adapter. They all work perfectly fine and they're all very safe. I've even seen engineering drawings and talked to engineers that have worked on these adapters. These adapters are rock solid in my opinion and you won't have any problem with them. So uh, there's the good news. Uh, if you're one of those people waiting for months for this adapter, hopefully you're gonna get one really soon. Uh, you know, now that Ford has them coming from Tesla and I'm sure Electron is pumping these things out. Electron's been making adapters for years, electric vehicle charging adapters. They've probably sold more electric vehicle charging adapters than any other company. They have the capacity to ramp up production and make these things. So I'm very happy that Ford's decided to, uh, to endorse this adapter. I think if, if perhaps they're in the process of testing the A to Z adapter, we don't know. Uh, and perhaps they needed to get approval from Tesla first, which I doubt. I don't think Ford would have agreed to uh, having Tesla have to endorse whatever adapters they use. I think uh, Tesla would say, look Ford, if, if you did your own research and you, you're comfortable letting your customers use these on the supercharger network, we'll let you use it because uh, you know I, I don't know how Ford would feel about that if, if their customers were 
you know, beholden to this, that they could only use something that Tesla endorsed. So we don't really know, but that's my guess that Tesla said, look, you do your own homework, let your customers use whatever adapters that you've tested and you feel are safe. They're your vehicles after all. And uh, if you have a problem, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to it then. Um, so here's where we are today. Uh, today's actually uh, Halloween, uh, October 31st, 2024. Ford should begin, or if they haven't already, shipping both of these adapters. Now, if you haven't already ordered one, uh, you have to pay for it now from Ford. That The period expired where they were giving you the free adapters. And the interesting thing is Ford was had these adapters on their website, well, these adapters, for $230. When I looked this morning, the adapter says $200. It also says out of stock because I'm sure they're still going to catch up with all the people that have been waiting on them before somebody can go order one. But now the price is $200, which is interesting. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's going to last forever. I don't even know if it was a mistake, but it for sure said $200 on the Ford website today. Uh, the Electron adapter you can buy directly from Electron for $200. And if you use the state of charge coupon code on the Electron website, it's 15% off. That's $30. So you can get this for $170 uh, if you go directly from Electron and use my coupon code state of charge, or you can buy it for $200 from Ford. That's up to you. Uh, I have a similar discount with the A to Z adapter here. However, the coupon code for the A to Z adapter is going to expire. I think it's November 15th. So you have two weeks if you wanted to buy this one to get it uh, with the full 15% off. After that, the, the discount drops down to 5% on the A to Z. But Lectron is holding pretty solid with the 15% off with the state of charge discount code. So if you want to order one, like I said, you could buy one from Ford for $200 and it says Ford on the side, or you can get one from Lectron and pay $170. That's your call. Uh, but this is good news, and hopefully followers and everybody that's been waiting for these adapters to charge their Ford vehicle on, on Tesla superchargers will get uh, one before the holiday season. Uh, you know, I know there's still a lot of people out there that have been waiting on them, but I know Electron has the capacity to make tons of these. I've talked to them about that. And uh, that plus the supply that Ford's still getting from Tesla should be enough to finally clear out the backlog for all you guys that have been waiting on these for a long time. And uh, let me know in the comment section if you do get your uh, adapter and how long it took, how long you've been waiting. Uh, I, I hope that clears up soon for you guys because it is liberating to be able to use the Tesla supercharger network. I own three electric vehicles, a Ford F-150 Lightning, a Rivian R1S, and a Chevrolet Equinox EV. And all three are the three brands that got the Tesla supercharger access. So whenever I go somewhere, not only do I have all the CCS1 DC fast chargers uh, available to charge, but also most of the Tesla superchargers. Not all of them because you can't use V2 superchargers. And the best way to know which Tesla supercharger you can use is in Ford's uh, navigation system. It will direct you to uh, charging stations that you can access. But I also use the Tesla app because that seems to be even more accurate than any of the other navigation systems on the other companies, Ford included, that direct you to the proper charger. Uh, there's, it seems like they're still getting caught up with uh, identifying which uh, Tesla superchargers you can use and which you can't. I found a couple instances recently that it was wrong um, and wrong not it didn't tell me I can go to a supercharger and I could. It was the opposite. I knew this one supercharger station was V3 and I could use my NAX adapter, but it wasn't listed on the Ford uh, navigation list of chargers. So uh, uh, if you really want the perfect list, the Tesla app tells you that because, I mean, it's their network. They're not going to make a mistake on that one. Well, that's all I have here today. Um, listen, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comment section. I'll try to get those answered by Ford. And if this is your first time here at State of Charge, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.